renewable resource crisis in India. I'm James Bennett in central India where 330 million people grip of a crippling drought and this train is the only water supply for half a million Indians. The federal election hasn't been called yet, but campaigning in some key marginal seats is already well underway. In a close contest, the results in Western Australia, where the Liberal Party dominates, could be crucial. Over the next few Sundays, we'll take a look at the main battlegrounds, including the Liberal-held seat of Cowan and the new electorate of Burt. But first, to the traditional Labor heartland of Fremantle, where, as Claire Moody reports, a colourful contest is unfolding. Labour's candidate for Fremantle was among friends today at the annual May Day March through the port city. I think we're losing the concept of the Australian fair go and I've put my hand up to run for Fremantle because I am very conscious of the legacy I leave behind. But also making the most of today's event was his Greens challenger. We're keen to see a representative um, for Fremantle who will work on climate change, who will protect human rights. Fremantle's been held by Labour since 1934, but it's no longer the working class wharfy town it once was. And with Labour's sitting member Melissa Park retiring, the Greens are talking up their chances. It is not outside the realms of possibility that the result here in Fremantle could give the Greens another crack at balance of power in the lower house. If there is a winnable seat for the Greens in Western Australia, then it is Fremantle. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a misapprehension that because the Greens won the state seat of Fremantle at a by-election in 2009, that it follows that they're equally competitive in the federal seat. The seat stretches well beyond green-leaning Fremantle, east to Jandicott and south to Henderson. Labour holds it by about 5.4%. But the party's been criticised for endorsing maritime union organiser Chris Brown, who could become a target of a Liberal campaign on union militancy. Mr Brown, a waterfront worker for nearly 30 years, says he doesn't think that'll affect his vote. At the end of the day, I'm a father, I'm a husband and somebody that lives in the community. Yes, yeah, sure, I'm a union member also, a proud union member, have been most of my working life. The Liberals managed 38% of the primary vote here at the last poll. The party's candidate, Sherry Sufi, made local headlines recently over an essay on Aboriginal affairs, criticising the apology to the stolen generations and pointing out that European colonisation was not an invasion but a settlement. Mr Sufi declined repeated requests for an interview. The Liberal Party volunteered a local senator instead. Mr Sufi's only just been pre-selected uh, for the seat of Fremantle, for which I congratulate him. So he's at the moment establishing his profile, getting himself out there, getting himself known. It's appropriate at the moment that you'd be talking to me. The senator says the main election issue in Fremantle will be the Perth Freight Link, which the Greens and Labour are opposing and the Liberals are funding. What people are starting to wake up to, of course, now, is that it will significantly increase the values of their land and their homes along those areas. But even with a departing sitting member, analysts predict Labour will hold on to Fremantle. I doubt that the Liberal Party are going to throw a huge amount of resources into the electorate. They have got a number of seats that they need to defend in Western Australia. I really don't think they're on the offensive in this state. The Liberals deny that, saying they're running in Fremantle to win. Claire Moody, ABC News. A remote West Australian community reeling from a string of youth suicides is sending a delegation to an Alice Springs conference devoted to suicide prevention. The 7,000 kilometre journey through the desert hasn't deterred these people. 